Well, both Exxon and Chevron beat on earnings this morning, but my next guest says it's the smaller companies that could prove to be the better buy. With us is Neil Dingman. He's Managing Director of Energy Research at Truist. Good to see you, Neil. Welcome. Thank you, Kelly. What, what are you most excited about in the space right now? I mean, we do have, obviously, a, a tough six-month, five, six-month uh, losing stretch, at least for the crude, but what do you think of the stock's performance? I mean, the stocks, what's so unique is, unlike years ago, these stocks are kicking off so much free cash flow that the shareholder return that they're giving to investors is incredible. It's not it's not the record levels it was last year, but, I mean, a number of my names, I mean, even, even Exxon and Chevron are paying uh, almost 10% free cash flow yields and paying out almost half of that to investors. And then, as you mentioned, some of my smaller companies have free cash flow yields nearing 20% and are paying out 70, 80% of that free wow. cash flow. That's, uh, can you name some names to give us an example of, uh, of which ones you're talking about? Sure. I mean, you look and still pretty good size. I Man, look at like Pure Permian, Diamondback uh, Energy. You've had uh, Travis and those guys on before. Uh, just a tremendous company. They're paying back 70, 80% of their free cash flow. A little bit smaller also in the Permian called Permian Resources, symbol PR. Uh, they're doing a tremendous job. Even ConocoPhillips, um, you know, is, 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 has over a 10% free cash flow yield. So, you know, what's unique is just uh, two or three or four years ago, this was a, an industry that was just continuing to try to grow, was outspending. And I don't think that's ever going to be the case anymore. Right, exactly. So does that make you equally bullish on, you know, the likes of Chevron, Exxon? And what about the potential for consolidation? I mean, is that a move that you'd like to see here that you think we could see more of? I think it's a move that we're going to have to see. I think, as Darren Woods had pointed out and others have pointed out, the lack of inventory out there is going to force these companies to either merge with others or continue to buy privates or continue to do deals to continue to add to that inventory that they have. Because remember, if it, any EMP that sits still, their decline is about 30, 25 to 30 percent a year. So even if you're sitting still, you're going to lose about a quarter of your inventory so you're always on the lookout for more inventory. That's pretty incredible. So basically, in order to just meet our basic needs for energy, they have to keep acquiring smaller players. Is that right? That's right. I mean, most of them right now still have, fortunately, like a Diamondback has close to 10 years inventory. But every time you use another year of that, you're going to have to keep replenishing that. So you're exactly right, Kelly. It, it's just this treadmill that even though they have great organic growth, they're going to have to continue to look for ways either through merger of equals, maybe buying privates, maybe trying to buy publics, whatever it might be. But that's going to be a continuous cycle that I don't think changes. What happens if the administration, as it has been its want lately, says no consolidation? That, that, that does. I mean, we've seen it, you know, with EQT, uh, a pushback on a, on a deal that they still haven't closed uh, in the gas industry. So that does make challenges. I, you know, I don't think you would see that if you go, if some of these public companies are just trying to buy private assets, hmm. uh, although in the case of EQT, that is the case. But larger deals, larger merger of equals might be more difficult, I think. But the smaller just buying some assets might be a little bit easier to run by the administration. And I guess just to follow the logic real quick before we go, if they don't allow those deals, then does that mean the, the crude price is at risk of spiking even higher in the future? I mean, if we don't bring enough inventory online? Uh, yeah, that, that's exactly what it means, that these companies are going to have to keep drilling their lesser and lesser quality inventory that, again, is only, you know, again, people ask how much inventory is out there. At $100 oil, there's plenty of inventory. At $50 oil, there's not a lot. So you're exactly right. Uh, you know, the, the less of these deals we see out there, uh, just the, the, the larger chance we see for prices to go higher and higher. Oh, food for thought, so to speak. Neil, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. Neil Dingman of Truist.